mitochondria are, are organelles which are present in almost all human cells. Um, and the major function of mitochondria is to um, oxidize uh, various organic molecules which are derived from the food we eat and combine it with oxygen we breathe uh, to create, uh, to make energy which is necessary for all um, cellular processes. Interestingly, in the process of capturing this energy, um, mitochondria produce a lot of by toxic byproducts, um, mostly oxygen radicals, which damage different components of the cell. For that reason, um, for quite a number of years already, many people believed that mitochondria are uh, the weak link of the cell, uh, which gets the most damage, and for that reason could be something like an aging clock. The more we um, damage our mitochondria, the closer we are to aging, uh, the more we get aging and death. Interestingly, uh, mitochondria, unlike many other organelles in the cell, contain their own DNA. Uh, this is because mitochondria um, eventually uh, evolved from um, ancestral symbiotic bacteria, which lived in, um, um, in first eukaryotic cells perhaps two billion years ago. So important thing about uh, DNA is that um, the damage which it gets from different toxic uh, uh, substances can be eventually converted into mutations. And mutations is something which cannot be repaired anymore. They remain in the DNA forever. So while other types of damage can be repaired or diluted when mitochondria grow and, and divide and um, are recycled in the uh, cellular recycling machinery, uh, Mitochondrial mutations, um, mitochondrial DNA mutations, do survive and, and are accumulated in the cell. For that reason, many people believe that mitochondrial mutations could be the most important part of damage which mitochondria get um, during our lifespans. In, indeed, uh, the rate of mutation accumulation in mitochondrial DNA is perhaps approximately about a thousand times faster than in uh, comparable uh, sequences of nuclear DNA. This is a huge number, 1,000 fold, but it actually doesn't tell us anything because uh, the way mitochondrial mutations affect physiology of the cell is pretty complex. One uh, problem is that there are lots of mitochondrial genomes in a single cell. There are hundreds or even thousands or even hundreds of thousands uh, mitochondrial genome per cell. So because here we're talking about um, somatic mutations, which are random events which happen uh, in the cell, uh, we can imagine that one mitochondrial genome can get one type of mutation, another mitochondrial genome will get another type of mutation, and if we imagine what happens, we will get a complex mixture of different mutations in, the, in one cell. The problem with this is that mitochondria actually are not isolated entities. They tend to fuse and, and dissociate. This is called fusion and fission. And in doing so, they exchange the product of, uh, of, tra of transcription and translation from their DNA. So if one mitochondria has one mutation, produces one um, defective component, and the other mitochondria produces another defective component, when they fuse and, and dissociate, they will exchange their components, so they will uh, complement each other deficiencies. So in fact, if you get a huge number of mutations in the cell, you still, they still do not do any harm to the cell because they compensate each, each other deficiencies. So actually what we do need to be able to harm the cell is to have uh, pretty much the same mutation in every mitochondrial genome in the cell. Surprisingly, when you go in the tissue, for example, of an aging human, and look at individual cells, what you find is that in one cell, thousands of genomes uh, contain one mutation, the same in all genomes, and in the other cell we get another mutation, again, the same in all genomes. This is very puzzling, uh, assuming that mitochondrial mutations are random events. So what probably happens here is a sort of a type of population dynamics. The thing is that mitochondria of a cell are, are equivalent to a population of animals. They do divide, 
This is like the equivalent of birth. They are recycled in the recycling machinery, which is the equivalent of death. So we actually have a dynamic population with death and birth. And uh, population geneticists know that um, in um, real animal populations, there are things called uh, genetic swipes when one mutation takes over the whole population. That can happen either because this mutation is advantageous for some reason, or just by random, random genetic drift. Uh, and it appears that both, um, uh, both phenomena take place in mitochondria. And whatever the, the mechanism, uh, the, the output is that we see cells which are so-called homoplasmic with respect to mitochondrial mutations. One has one mutation, other has another mutation, and the percentages of the mutations is pretty high. It's kind of counterintuitive because uh, one would think that this process should, be, should not happen in the, in the organism because it's extremely harmful, but for some reason it does. Um, so now we know that mitochondrial, somatic mitochondrial mutations can harm our cells, our, our, our cells, but does it really happen in reality? And are there enough cells to make us age? Uh, this question is not solved yet, and all we have is certain uh, preliminary studies. The problem with mitochondrial mutations is, and mitochondria in general, is that unlike nuclear DNA, we have very few tools uh, to work with mitochondrial mutations. There is no genetic engineering in mitochondrial world. We cannot create a mutation or gene and insert in mitochondria and test it in, uh, in cell line. All we have to do is to take mutations which are provided to us by nature. For example, we can isolate a cell with mutation from a patient with a known mitochondrial disease. Or we can put cells in culture and try to select cell line which will contain some random mutation. But we cannot create mutation by ourselves. That is why we actually know pretty little about somatic mitochondrial mutations. For example, some of those mutations may be just deadly. They may kill the cell. Well, we never will see these mutations because the cells are dead. So we actually, there's a lot to, to learn and to study in, in mitochondrial uh, somatic world. So um, let's see, what do we actually see in an aged human uh, with respect to mitochondrial mutations? Um, the way to study this is to stain, to uh, take frozen, frozen uh, pieces of tissue, uh, slice, and, uh, slice them with, uh, with a special knife, and then stain those little sections uh, with special dyes, which will show us which cells are active and which are not active with respect to mitochondrial metabolism. And if you do that with uh, common human tissues like brain or colon for that purpose, uh, you will see that indeed there's a mosaic of cells in the, uh, in the tissue. Some of them turn to be blue. The blue cells are the ones which are inactive with respect to mitochondrial metabolism, and others are brown, which are healthy, nice cells. So, for example, in colon, uh, a colon the structure of colon uh, consists of crypts. There are little pits. That, if this is like the, the surface of colon, there are little pits. And the cells which are inside these pits are all come from one stem cell or a few stem cells which reside at the bottom of the, pit, of the pit. So what you see when you stain colon is that some crypts are completely blue, inactive, and some of them completely uh, brown. In the old colon, the percentage of blue crypts is almost 15%, which is a lot. So what happens apparently is that the stem cell which feeds the crypt gets a mutation. That mutation becomes homoplasmic takes over the whole stem cell, and then it feeds defective cells and makes the whole, the whole uh, uh, crypt uh, defective. Another example is uh, brain. Uh, actually, different areas of the brain are very different with respect to mitochondrial mutation. Some of them are completely normal, and there's almost no those blue cells. But if you look at some special areas, for example, substantia nigra. Substantia nigra is famous uh, because this is the area which is destroyed in Parkinson's disease. Um, so what we see in normal individuals, normal aged individuals, but which do not have Parkinson's disease, is that almost as many as 50% of uh, neurons in those, um, in, in substantia nigra can be blue meaning uh, inactive with respect to mitochondrial, uh, uh, mitochondrial metabolism. If you take those cells one by one and look to see what is inside them, we can discover that 
Each of them contains certain type of mitochondrial mutations. Actually, these mutations are deletions where a big portion of mitochondrial genome is taken out and trashed. Uh, so those cells are definitely uh, inactive. Um, but they, they survive. They are not dead cells. They are there. They don't have uh, appropriate mitochondria, which probably means that they, they don't work as normal neurons. And we actually don't know what is the output of this. One of the hypotheses which we have is that even though old people are not Parkinsonian in classic Parkinsonian sense, but they do have some features which, which are similar to Parkinson's disease, which is slow gait, you know, trembling of hands, and uh, overall slowness. This, what is called mild Parkinsonian syndrome, is very common. In people over 85, it's almost 50% of people have it. So our hypothesis is that perhaps uh, the fact that many cells of normal age substantial nigra are inactive create this mild Parkinsonian uh, phenotype, which could be actually very important. This phenotype is not a, just a benign thing. People be fall because of that, and this is really something very dangerous to have. Interesting analogy here is with uh, the fly, the Drosophila. Uh, Drosophila appears to age in part because its uh, intestine becomes inactive. And actually, it could be shown that this is because mitochondria of the int intestine are, are defective. Not in the same way as, as I just described. It's not mutations. They inactive for different reasons. But if you s sort of uh, rejuvenate mitochondria in the gut of the fly, uh, you can actually make it young again. But interesting thing, if you feed the old fly with a defective mitochondria with, with a dye, you see that this dye actually penetrates the intestine and the whole fly becomes blue. Uh, the young fly, or the fly which was cured of this syndrome by, uh, by, by rejuvenating mitochondria, will not be blue. All, this, all the dye will be, will be limited to the, to the actual intestine. So well, our hypothesis here is that those 15% of inactive crypts may actually be the penetration points which allow various toxic substances to leak from the, uh, from the intestine into blood, into uh, lymph, uh, lymph. So um, it could be that even though we only have 15% of crypts, which actually look kind of healthy, if you don't stain them with this dye, you won't see the difference between an active and an active uh, crypt. They still can be pretty uh, dangerous for us. Unfortunately, right now, we don't have any efficient uh, ways of uh, curing mitochondrial disease or mitochondrial inactivity of cells in aging. Uh, although some interesting experiments were done. For example, uh, as far as substantia nigra is concerned, uh, there were experiments where people injected cells into substantia nigra of an old mouse, which was previously treated with toxic substance to kill off the cells, and apparently they were able to repopulate the nigra with the new cells. So, in principle, some treatments are possibly available or will be available in the future, but right now this field is pretty, is pretty uh, in a very uh, primitive stage. So, hopefully, the studies of uh, what mitochondrial mutations can do to us in aging will actually uh, stimulate research in this area. Because if you don't know what you have to, to, to cure, you will not actually uh, develop any cures.